Welcome back to the English and English Podcast. That's Brett. That's Eric. And then we're going to get this thing I was, was going to sit there and see how long I could be quiet before you <laughs> <laughs> realize like, he's it's not going to say anything. I, I got to say something. I gotta There's dead out. air out there. We're losing them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. That was from this movie, uh, Four, Win- uh, Four Christmases, actually, with Vince Vaughn. Okay. Which overall wasn't amazing. Right. But it had some funny parts. And one of them was when they... Because they have to go to like... They have two sets of parents that are split up. I think I so did see So there's four this. different households that they have to go to. And one of them, they do like a Christmas pageant. And they rope him into doing the pad, like to doing the play on stage. And he's like Joseph, but he gets like Starts all, hamming it up. All, like and... inexplicably gets all into it and stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm going to go out there. And he's like, strides out there. He's like, they're digging my stride. <laughs> yeah, I remember and that. And then he gets yeah. out there. She's supposed to say something. And he's like, it's dead. And she just can't. Or doesn't? He's like, it's dead air out there. We're losing them. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets all hyped to be right, the center of attention, like, ooh, like on, on stage, like the church like, Christmas play, like yeah. rocking it out. Yeah, right, yeah, it's hilarious. But it's like they're digging my stride, <laughs> <laughs> and it's dead air out there. We're losing them. <laughs> Those two parts are the best. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna kick this thing off uh, like we said we would Can last you time. Just grab a paper. I need something to write on. With. Uh, I need paper, too. You need paper? All right, well, maybe we pause this thing oh, for a geez. second. Jeez. All right, I'm back. I got my paper. We're good to right, go. Now you were going to say something. I was saying we're going to do our uh, bit that we talked about last week. We're oh, going to yeah, start off with the top trends for this week. The top Google trends. Before top I get Google to trends. that, or while I'm looking it up, there was this um, quote that I just happened to pop up on uh, Facebook. I think I said it was John Steinbeck. Okay. But it says, socialism never took root in America because the poor there see themselves not as exploited proletariat, but as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> temporarily <laughs> embarrassed. Like, they just need to wait a second and they'll have their millions back. Right, yeah, exactly. Trends. I would disagree with to a certain extent, though. It certainly has taken root in America to some extent. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it was a little... Communism has not taken root, Trending but socialism has. Now, let's do searches. Charts... We're gonna do searches. All right. Let me Saturday. See Let me see the pencil here. We have D Day's top trending search for today. Right on its seventy first anniversary with these galleries. By the way, this may be a little bit behind when this gets posted. Right. Uh, you're saying D Day now, but that's because of uh, some travel necessitated recently. And then uh, we have the Belmont Stakes because what's his name, American Pharaoh, we the third horse in four years to go to the Belmont with the, in, in search of the Triple Crown. But apparently, none of this is exciting and grand. No, but there was Move something on. that I read yeah. that the reason that there haven't been any triple crown winners and triple crown is the one who wins all three of the right of the races, the, the races, the um, the Preakness, the uh, Belmont, Kentucky, Kentucky Derby. Derby. Yeah. Anyways, and um, the reason is because they changed the the last one, the Kentucky Derby, so it's now a longer race, and the first two are like sprints. Yeah. So it's like a sprinter then winning a marathon is just not going to happen anymore. Right. Yeah, so it takes yeah. a different type of skills. Different type of horse. So like it's, of it'll be extremely team. unlikely for a horse who's really good at the short, fast races to also be able to win the the longer, longer race. And not like it's not that much of a difference. Right. But, but in is, horse racing, yeah. you can't top notch an animal. For, for a very long thing. at all, it'll break it down. Yeah. Same well, I mean, it's you just can't a sprint different... as a person, you know, a whole yeah. marathon. And the long. sprinters are not necessarily going to be the best at mid distance runners, too. Or something. Yeah. Then the Women's World Cup. Next. Champ- <laughs> <laughs> Insidious 3. Oh, Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. What's this, that? This one we should be able to make a title out of. Anyways, it's just like the Michael Jordan of the WNBA or something, I guess. Okay. She's one of the stars. But she has this, like, girlfriend. Okay, There's yeah. A raging so, oh, yeah. of course, someone in the so NBA is a raging lesbian. In the WNBA no, well, they got in the lesbian. news for um, not long ago because they were got in a domestic dispute yes, where they're like okay, beating the shit out of each this. other. And then now it comes out that one of them was pregnant. I forget which one. I think the other one. Probably not the one who's the not best the, player. Yeah, well, obviously it would be noticed a lot easier in the athlete. The rest of the team. Well, they're both a WNBA players. Oh, really? Yeah, but one players. of them is like a, a really. I don't know, well known in quotation marks, but it's like one of the better WNBA players, as Higher far as I know. Players, I'm totally yeah. talking out of my ass based on what I've read. On I know right, nothing yeah. about the WNBA. men's basketball, let alone the WNBA. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so then they beat the shit out of each other. As actually, um, lesbian couples report like an insanely high yeah, level of domestic fight. violence. Oh, I have no doubt. And you know what's funny is because actually women. Girls start lash out, of out fights well, they lash out physically because a they lot. know that a guy won't fight right. back out of fear of being a misogynist. Or it's just not an or, issue like we were talking about before. Or just, 
certain no, dogs, like every chihuahua them. bites you, it's not a big of a deal. So if they're like, you know, slap or punch something, and the guy's not going to fight the guy them, just puts most of the time he's like, not going to actually fight them. Right, yeah. But when it's another woman, then they're going to fight them, and, right, or yeah. just get beat up. And, and also, they may go to the cops, too, whereas if a guy gets slapped up, he may not, he probably isn't going to go to the cops. Right. Because First of all, because he's embarrassed, less. and second of all, because he's going to get arrested. Right. Anyways, exactly. regardless. So now one of them is like pregnant for some sperm donor, and of course they had to be like, oh, if she wasn't pregnant at the time, they were punching each other, and some article I read is like, kind of interesting that that had to be like actually noted right yeah like, exactly violent, beating each other up like well she wasn't pregnant and now apparently the news is that now they're getting an annulment so they're getting like not married right. or I mean divorced well, I guess there's a word for that already I don't have to come up with not married right yeah exactly <laughs> well welcome gay yeah. people Brittany to, Griner uh, files annulment papers day after wife announces baby <laughs> right, yeah what was this like? And though everyone's so happy that gay people have this beautiful ability to get right, married. To get now. married and have, yeah, kids, now have like divorce, regular people. Right. I want have out. divorces right. like regular yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, and to get out. I like want to add more gravitas to my breakups too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> breaking up this isn't the same I, as it's divorcing. Just like it's too clean and easy right. in our sex craze. It doesn't, doesn't uh, seem like heavy enough. Lifestyle. To, I want to be divorced. I want it to be hurtful and have leave behind wrecked children to like in um, Pulp like in, Fiction right, we're not yeah. gonna fight about it we're not gonna give it she, we're gonna get fucking divorced right, yeah. <laughs> like I don't wanna break up I don't wanna go on separation I wanna get fucking divorced that's what they're saying that's what they wanted yep well they got what they wanted apparently <laughs> then Jurassic Park what about it no it's I don't know out. it just shows terms that are trending oh okay Jurassic I mean that Park Jurassic Park, Park movie's coming out okay. um, Jurassic World is coming out and Lena Dunham <laughs> God, you know why? I was just thinking about this the other day. Without getting too far into our like uh, rants on um, anything, mediocrity. The reason, I, uh, yeah, exactly, and that's the reason I hate her. Is not because she's so fucking ugly or so fucking fat. She's not the ugly. She's lukewarm, and I spit her from my mouth. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's not even that. Like, there's most people are mediocre. Right. But she celebrates it. She puts out there's something that should be celebrated, not just accepted. Well, it's not even that they celebrate, because it's one thing to say well, they laud a champion it. of the common people type act. That's not what I mean. Not that's like, not that Because no all, one out there exactly. is being like, everyone has to be awesome or above right. average. It's saying that like they're actually seeking out being mediocre and saying that being mediocre is better than being the best version of yourself. Right. And she's like happy about not being the best ver- best version of herself. Right. And like even in the Bible, regardless of whether you actually believe it or not, supposedly this the most pure being in the world, God, is right. saying that he would has actually said he would rather you be good or bad than media than lukewarm. <laughs> He's literally saying he'd rather well, there's be different evil ways that that's interpreted. Than, yeah, but, but yes, to a certain extent, you know on to that, like using a biblical reference again, you'll have to take it for what you will, but I think it's a very good philosophical point. One of the most famous verses in the Bible, of course, is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody focuses on the sinned part, but the fallen short of the glory is more actually the more damning because the point is everybody's made mistakes. Yeah, but mistakes can be corrected, forgiven, but you also just don't measure up, is what it said. Yeah. Like, you know, like the, you, you have not achieved nobility or greatness well, or anything. And yeah. so have you seen the picture of her don't, like yeah like in her, like, like, like sitting there like a bathroom. model and like these all frumpy and like she's just average that's the thing like right, yeah. I mean that's not these days average is pretty bad but right, she's yeah. not like she's morbidly obese above average because she's not obese right, right? Yeah, but, she's not morbidly obese she's not ugly like hideous she's just not attractive she's just plain she has an ugly and she's not doing herself any favors plain and a bit frumpy yeah, in terms of she's her physicality homely, and she's like just slovenly looking but she's she's, doing, she's like presenting that as like as being beautiful or something right. instead of just being like I'm not interested in trying to better which that alone is sin, sin enough, or not sin but bad enough right yeah that's why like I don't I don't hate her I mean like for her she's one of those and I'm like you know what your miserable life is of mediocrity is punishment enough yeah may you live well, forever right yeah exactly <laughs> it's one of those things where it's, it's the people who like you said it's not just celebrating mediocrity because that's not even what they're trying to do in their own minds it's what they're just trying to do is just celebrate themselves rather than better themselves they're trying right. to say I should be loved for what celebrating I celebrating themselves for not rather than specifically for not being the best. It's not that they say I should be loved. It's that they say I, I should, should be, be celebrated right. or acknowledged or championed for what I am now. Right. It's not versus, just about like telling people that they don't have to like always be awesome at everything, which that it actually makes sense. Right. Because not, not everybody can. You're not always going to be awesome at everything. You have to accept a way certain amount of mediocrity in your life because not everybody. can But be see, for me, mediocrity is not necessarily about. 
the result. Sort of like being a winner or a loser. Like, there's yeah, billionaires yeah. out there. Like, someone like Mark Zuckerberg. To me, that guy's a fucking loser. Right, you can tell yeah. this by the way he interacts with other people and everything. Right, exactly. He's a fucking loser. And, and just by the way he conducts And those guys that are dirt poor that have a better mean. mindset and are more honorable and courageous and just not giving up. And exactly. They're real winners. That's Most of the, the time, problem. there's an extremely high correlation between those type of people who just... It's almost impossible for someone who's a real winner to always fail at everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, sometimes... Some things like we prioritize like success, so this guy might not be rich because he doesn't give a shit about being rich, so he's not like failing at that. Right. But in other words, but yeah, so there's a lot. Of, being a winner isn't part about the though, result. Is, it's yeah, part of that though it's just is um, the definition of mediocrity as people take it. Right. Or, or I guess what I'm trying to say is that they take it as mediocrity of results, like you were saying, just right. because. You're not a mediocre person. It doesn't mean you're always going to be rich and famous. Or above average. Or above average in certain skill levels. It just means you have a good character. You don't call a shit pile of rows and vice versa. And that's what it is, right. It's about... You know, or try to change... But but most of the time, when you're that person, you will be above average in most of the things that you do. It's something, but it doesn't matter. In most things that you do. Right, but it doesn't matter. The point is That alone isn't the evidence of what I'm saying. Talking about what's right and being honest about definitions. Because it's not like some guy in a wheelchair... Or like a Stephen Hawking is like mediocre because he can't run or whatever. Right, it's nothing yeah, exactly. to do with that. Yeah. But yeah, so that's what her, it's like her disease is inside her. And it's just, and just her you're not outside the best appearance doesn't mean you're mediocre is just, either. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like, yeah, we tend to get caught up a lot. A lot of people tend to get caught up, I should say. Not we as in you and me, but we as a society tend to get caught up a lot. Yeah, because even if you measure average Looking at who gets on TV versus like right. or who's accomplishing rich. something in your well, stone life. People have know. a priori like understanding of success per se that isn't really exactly. meaningful right, unless well, you choose it to be on his, yeah, back so to the top trending her. things yeah. makes you live forever <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's find some funnier top trending stories here let's this is this Harushi is not Harushi Tran is not someone who got beat up by Chris Brown I have no idea this is not uh, Fertile Ground man we gotta get we gotta get some better stories here and the soul we got dead oh out. she's trending who that's the mattress girl and her porn tape and the oh. Salkowitz. Yeah, Salkowitz, yeah. This is one of the stories I was picked for today uh, anyway. We just can't get away from the social commentary, All I right. guess. God, I never thought... Like, too much if I, out there. at 15 years old, looked ahead and said... Or like 10 years old or something, as a kid, looked ahead and said, I thought I might be doing social you know, commentary on the news of the day on like a, a sh- online... I would have said, what the fuck is the internet? Right. <laughs> Ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked ahead. What the so fuck my is fucking, the internet? Where the fuck is the internet? <laughs> yeah. That too. But you know, before we actually get into it. this, before we get into the, the social comedy, this is funny because I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and I was like, looking, and I guess this is a sign that I'm old now. Right. Because I was looking back and thinking that like, it doesn't really feel like that much has changed. And then I was like, holy shit, wait a second. I was like, nothing that I do on a day-to-day basis is what you would have done. Could I even do back then? Like, no cell phone. No, there wasn't even fucking YouTube back then. Yeah. Let alone like when I was, I because I saw in my oh, room weird in my storage that. room a literal like disposable film camera, and I was like, I used to use these not because I was like retro, because that's what people used. Well, that's the only thing that they <laughs> yeah, picture exactly. For that was, was the like, cheap oh, option. Oh my shit! I mean, I was young at that time, you right. know, ten or twelve, but not that young. Yeah, the cell phone. And camera I didn't was have a cell of. phone until I got to college and it had a camera where you couldn't do anything with it you couldn't send the picture anywhere no, no. and it didn't have internet like really on the phone that was the first time that i that we had anything beyond dial up yeah was at college it is fascinating though how like you said it is that dichotomy of not that much has changed but and everything has changed. changed right yeah because, because like you don't feel like that society in many ways is the same like if you just walked outside you'd make the cars a lot of the changes stuff. brought about by the internet are just pedantic weird well, they're, stuff they're more about like that... a, uh, the way you do the same things you're right. not really doing different exactly. things exactly like you're not I really just doing use my talk to my phone to navigate instead of it's looking letting at a map. you talk to somebody much quicker right. communicate in several different ways email voicemail and texts right. not just a phone call but um, it's not fundamentally altered society as much as people think it has sometimes I mean, it has in some and ways. In other ways, ways that ideas, that you never would have thought right, of. In some ways, ideas spread a lot faster, but that's almost bad. How much these like Twitter ideas and stuff just spread well, and because of the way the people deal disappear. with the information. Well, that's nothing, the, obviously, yeah. you want the insanely quick, you know, relaying of information. That's never right. in well, and of except, itself a bad thing. Except it's not the fact that it's just quick relaying of information. Like I said, it's the right. But I'm, I'm just that in and of itself is never a bad. No, but that's not thing. what it's I'm talking about. Is what I'm saying. It's it's not exactly how people use it. I'm talking about either. That's a big part of it. But I'm saying it's the the way they took this technology that allowed very quick 
information transmission. Yeah. And decided to make a network that's all about pithy transmitting of like meme plexes <laughs> that mean yeah. nothing. Like flash in the pan. Oh, did you see what this guy tweeted? And when did he respond? And three days later, nobody remembers. But it right. generates constant motion and like oh trending oh trending well, what's trending now is right even Emma though we're Salkowitz. using that ourselves to right. uh, make humorous effects Salkowitz just released her sex tape yeah so now this is a hilarious story uh, for those of you who don't know and this might be a little few days old at this point uh, this is the girl who she claimed to have been raped right yeah then instead of going to the police she started carrying a mattress about campus as some sort of um what do they call that? Um, performance Stated. art. Well, she said like it was and months she, later. She said like she did re- eventually report it to the school and right. was in a, in apparently the school, which is if you know anything about like they don't have the same rules of try, you know that they're precedence. basically complete shams. And even right. under those sham courts, they just could not Ooh, find that the guy case. had done because it was just not only. I mean, and under, if, that means that he basically didn't do it because he would have. He basically right. had to prove his innocence. Kangaroo court he basically thing. had to prove his innocence, right? And Unlike he, real court, where you bas- ostensibly have to prove the guilt of the right. person, they ask you, did you they do something use a bad? Much lower and you're standard like, yeah, of sure. evidence. They they allow you to admit anything that basically helps the case, even if it wouldn't normally be admitted in a real court. Anyway, right. so even under these horrible standards of evidence and bias, he was able to get the charges dropped. And so she was mad about that and saying that like. Oh my God! I'm, you know this justice hasn't happened. So she started carrying her mattress around that she was supposedly raped on right, as yeah. performance art for yeah. a for okay. a project. So right, so she's carrying the mattress around for a long time, and it becomes all the rage in the news and stuff like that for a while on the various sites. Yeah, and then of course, like everything in the internet, it fades away. And of course, after it's just she faded away enough, or something. right? Well, I'm just it's faded away just enough that nobody's paying attention anymore. She pulls another stunt here, which is to reenact her rape. In a video performance art, basically, she paid some guy to play to make a porn porn with her, make a porn with her, yeah, and where some stultifying, like slightly rough sex is called a rape or something, (laughs) you know, and then, um. Well, did you watch it? I haven't watched no, it. No, I'm just assuming. I'm, right. I'm guessing. Having not watched this, let's say somebody else, I linked to this article. Right. Somebody else who watch, listens to this watches that. I'm putting money down with you right now that what happens in there is not like violent rape, you know, like like they say. It's it's just. But it might be because this is her mind's vision. Well, this of is true. What it's, this is totally her depiction of what right. thinks that happened. But that's why I'm bringing it up. It's, it's also it's important to note that she isn't specifically saying. That this is the incident in question. Well, she is trying right, to because say I think she's, it's not she's smart enough but to know she could get sued. It's staged in a dorm room, the same one right. that she was in. It's her. It's her. Yeah. It's all about how. And then, but the dumb thing about it is obviously well, this, this is, is some piece of part about it. art. <laughs> this is the hilarious. Some piece of quote unquote art. And the hilarious part is then she wrote some like <laughs> accompanying article like if you look at this without my consent you're part of the problem <laughs> and this problematic rape culture and it's like so so you made a video put it out for an audience to watch and right. then you chastise people who watch it even though you're desperately trying to get attention here That's obviously funny. and it should also be noted that like for I mean, people like, who imagine, I don't know imagine let me finish real quick okay. here imagine if like somebody. Like the pink ribbon people for cancer, like come to our event to raise awareness, and then you show up, and they're like, "You showing up is because you support cancer." The cancer archy. We're here to yeah, <laughs> we're here to raise awareness, and you're supporting the cancer archy. You know, like, wait a minute, I thought the whole point of this was to raise awareness. Well, like, and for the people who haven't heard of the case, it wasn't just a question of them like, "Well, I guess there's no evidence that he did." Like there were, he had months. After she said, after the date at which she said the rape Alleged supposedly it took place, incident. she had been sending him like text messages for months, like pining trying to after him. pining after him, trying to hook Basically, up with him. He, was, he broke she up was with a her, stilted woman, yeah, and, and he and, he didn't and care she as much about, about it. As she did and, right, and so she framed him, tried to frame him for rape. Yeah, and what was pretty blatantly obvious when everything was said and done, because yeah. to the point where he's now but suing now, the school. Now actually, that she's doubled down smart. on this lie for so long, right. now she has to turn in performance art well, she's to gotten, make herself the patron saint of this kind she's of. She's gotten traction out of it, like even like some senator, like Gilbrandt, took her yeah. along to something. Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. Like these, they, they, like there's plenty of people out there that have actually been raped. Right, you exactly. can't use you can't one of them. Find one of them. Yeah, exactly. You can't <laughs> find an actual victim. Right. Somewhere? That's what's so funny is that. It shows you what they're after. Is all these stories like the the Duke lacrosse thing, the um, the the UVA rape like scandal that was another one that was proved wrong. Mm-hmm. Like these are the stories that keep making popular. They're not like someone who's actually raped. They want like stories that, that fit porn their star that was raped, not, yeah. or like and like 
Or like somebody in the ghetto was raped. Right, like and legitimately because, raped. Like, the person oh, went sound to, racist. Or the person went to prison. Black like DNA on, evidence, right. video proving. Right. Like those are not the ones that they championed. No, because they don't fit well, what the, they want to the, tear down. The, uh, uh, well, yeah, exactly. The um, aggressors in that sense are not their preferred enemy. Exactly. So exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not who they're trying to tear down. Right. The, uh, the aggressors of that are ones that people already know to worry about, which is or they don't want thugs, people to, criminals, to quote unquote worry about. Or they don't like if it's a black people. person. They're right, like, oh my right. god, we can't put out evidence that, that there's a minority problem. There, or, or there's something. gangs of like you know narcotics d- drug cartel people right. that are into. I've got one. If they right. want the white people, go after the cops. <laughs> Apparently, cops are twice. No, as No, they need the cops to. No, yeah, no, they need cops arrest his, uh, to arrest. Yeah, when they're false rape accused, right? But apparently, <laughs> cops are twi- not only they're way, way more likely to engage in domestic violence. Yeah. they're twice as likely to be rapists as anyone in the average population, too. Yeah. So I mean, it's probably a lot of that is just the problems that's been known with cops for a long time, and that it attracts criminals to. Yeah. Sure. Well, regardless of why, I'm just right. saying. Like, no, but I'm saying some of it is. Uh, there's probably something to be investigated. How much of it is? Training to be a cop and working for that establishment corrupts people versus how much of it is people who want and are corrupted by the desire for power going in and becoming cops. For me, so, I think it has this it's more, to, both, it's more to do with just the fact of how easy it is to get away with most things when you're a cop. Well, that's the, that's the so first instance. The certain like percentage the of fucked up people that are going to be in any profession blossom in that environment. Exactly. You know, they yeah, get away with a lot like, of some stuff. Some of it is... People who it's like the Milgram experiment, not yeah. Milgram experiment. The um, I know what you're talking about, where they give with people the, the uh, German one with the, the prison guards. What right, was that yeah. called? The I Milgram one was where they have someone telling you to, to keep electrocuting them. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, when it's someone in a lab coat, they're like, no, it's okay. They're like, please stop, please. It's like, no, it's okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go and they would do it still. Keep this was the other one that I forget what it was called, but it was a German one. Yeah, where it's the, a famous the prisoners, one. I can't the guards had all become like sadistic and stuff. They basically told them they weren't being supervised or something at some point, and they just started to... Yeah, like, I forget what the exact setup was, but they set up where there was prisoners and guards, and the, prisoner, the guards quickly... Be, and they gave pretty much the same type of leeway that you have in a real prison, maybe a little bit more leeway. Right. And um, they either became, like... There was, like, the weak ones... That couldn't control. They couldn't the control and were afraid. Or whatever. Then there's the tough but fair, which is, like, the ones that you want. Yeah. And then there were the ones that just went completely sadistic but it was right. like it wasn't like even thirds it was no like, not at all it was yeah. like a large a, a fairly large component if i remember correctly of ineffectual right a small minority of, of effectual and fair and, and a, big a, minor, a big sadistic group you know right yeah, interesting i think they're actually making a movie based on they it. made a german movie based on it i think they're making an american one oh, okay. too i, I think, think it was called the experiment the experiment is what, is what like it's that. called well that's what the german one is well called. i think this one is so it's just making or something or like the yeah, What's also experience. interesting about that experiment is what happened to the, the quote unquote prisoners. Like they would like go along with it. Yeah. Like they got into that mindset. Of Instead of being like the they give me the fuck out of here, I'm gonna sue you motherfuckers. Right, yeah, they got like locked into like the oh I'm a slave or a prisoner or whatever. Right, that right. was even scarier part of it to me. Right. You, like that shows the you the slave mind, mindset right. that people have. Well it's not just that, it's just the human brain acclimates itself to its environment. In, in right, but I mean, way. it is a mindset going in. There's absolutely no way yeah. you or I that would happen. I would We'd be like, "Come at me, you motherfucker!" And I'm going right. to sue the shit out of you. Right, and yeah, exactly. I'd be looking at the cameras, being like, "You see this? Like, if you don't get out of here right now, we're gonna, right, I'm going to yeah. go John Wick on your asses." Yeah, yeah, but I get exactly. out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I need to see that movie again. That it was, was badass. Yeah, Tony and, and them just watched it. A few it's days out ago. on DVD now, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. They they got it off Amazon. They just don't make streaming. that many cool revenge movies like that. Yeah, anymore. they're making another one of that one apparently. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It was yeah, just, it well. was a breakout. And they're making another Jack Reacher moment. movie, which I'm like, yes, cool. I don't yeah. know why but I just love that. I love well because it was the same thing, an old mold type movie without trying to go way over the top. And I like the like I don't I didn't read the books, so I'm not bent out of shape by the fact that it was Tom Cruise and not like The Rock or somebody huge. Because right. in the books they made a really really big deal about how gigantic and like powerful he was, right? Was. Which is not necessary for the movie for any other reason than it was in the book. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it worked in the movie. Right. And it didn't need to be that way. It's actually, to me, for, as a character thing, a little bit more cool and impressive to have, like, the little guy who's just so iron-willed. Right. I mean, it made, like, the fed. fighting stuff less realistic. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. fighting five guys is easier right. when you're the rock But, like, size. having a guy who's, like, you right. know, yeah. But then again, also, in a book, that may seem cool, but in the movie... You look at it in real life, you could see how got big this guy really is. Yeah. It would seem ludicrous to have five of these skinny punks decide to, to take right. this guy if he's right. the size of the rock. 
They just would have been like, no, nah, we ain't fist fighting this guy. We're going to shoot And the only him. time they messed it up in the movie is they were like, we're looking for someone who can kill a, a, somebody with one punch. And they're like, the guy in 4C. And they're like, what? And they're like, you'll see. Yeah. Like the, Tom Cruise is not someone who looks intimidating. Right, like yeah. He did a very good job of the, with the character, as far as Being I'm concerned. Like, Regardless of how it relates to the book, it's just an awesome right. character in the movie. Right. Yeah. And uh, oh, just yeah. in terms of like frame and like everything. Right. Yeah. Like exactly. That. That's what's cool about the character. Is like he just doesn't play the people's games. You know? Right. And just like the way like the guy's like, "Wait, where are you going?" He's like, "Don't do that." And, like right, he looks yeah. at his hand <laughs> on his shoulder and right, he's yeah. like, "Don't do that." And the guy's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." Exactly. Yeah. And the jokes are awesome too. When he's Plus, like, he never loses a capital case. Do you know why? Impeccable tailoring. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a little yeah. like that. <laughs> right, yeah. But that's, a, that's all part of the character just cutting through everything. Right, Instead just cutting the through the BS, set. not setting their frame, just right, going yeah, along with whatever exactly, he was. Yeah. That's what made it, made it fun. Yeah. And, um, and John Wick was similar in the other way, although he was less verbose, but the character was just about like, oh, nope, business. I've made up my mind. Yeah. I'm going to kill you because you've you've hurt me <laughs> my, my, my or insulted dog. me, right. and so now you're going to die. Like he, he, and almost unreasonably, like he didn't unreasonably. give his own son up to him right, to kill, yeah, yeah, exactly. so he goes after him too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like totally unreasonable. But right. It's just like I already told you what I'm going to do. Right. Now I'm following through. Right. I'm sorry. You know, like exactly. it's, it's what's going to happen. Like, this is what... I may have been unreasonable, but it's too late. I already said I was. going We didn't to even. Do it. He does not apologize for him. But saying it's like it's not even like yeah, the guy did like the the main guy. Like the main Russian mobster, yeah. the high guy, he didn't really do anything that crazy. Like he just was like, "No, please, don't kill my son. I'm not gonna let you kill my son," kind of thing. Right? Yeah, exactly. He wasn't even really that much of a villain, other right? Than being a, a, a sadistic mobster, right? It was his stupid son, you know, who caused it. Right, and he wasn't. Problem. He was like, "I'm gonna kill your son," and he was. And he wasn't just like, "All right." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. This whole warrior. And like, still, say kills them all. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's <is> awesome. <laughs> yeah, well. Speaking of movies, then uh, we'll jump over here because this one. Yeah, I just saw San Andreas too, which I can you talk did? about. Okay, I just yeah. saw Mad Max. I know you had already. Yeah, seen we, we I saw so it too. We talk about that. Yeah. So, of course, there was a little kerfuffle in the news, and of course, they loved to laugh about it. And other people's reviews of Red were always like, about, like "Oh yeah, feminist some, road and some anti-feminist like were saying like, there's, oh no, there's women in.' They're like, oh. That wasn't like a pr- complaint. But I do like when some people called it Mad Maxi Pad. Right, <laughs> I thought yeah, that was yeah. a good, a better pun on. No, no, I'm saying there were people, road. there were people making fun of the fact that people that were saying it's feminist. People saying yeah, it's feminist, I know. and um, and I have to talk about that in a second too. When you, right, because like Jessica Valenti and The Guardian, and who's like a raging feminist. Oh, okay. Was like, oh, this is not, this is a feminist movie. Of course it is. They were like saying, they were, their rebuttal was that like it is a feminist movie, which I thought was hilarious right. because that as when I watched the movie, well, not only does it prove them right, right. I don't think that they are right, no. and I think that if no one had said, like, if, if uh, uh, Clary hadn't written that article, I can see her not liking that movie. No, you know what I mean? No, because like that. the only female characters were like, like Charlie Theron was sort of like a tough character, but she was but, pretty quiet. And they were and like sex slaves, and they would have been like, of course, the only female characters in this are sex, sex slaves, slaves. Yeah, exactly. right? And that'd be saved by some man and stuff, right, which, yeah. they would have, which is hilarious. They would have gone the other way with it. So right. that's what I'm thinking. Actually, which this is, is like fourth level right, you're trolling. Like, yeah, exactly. By this director, by, he's if you like, come out ahead of time and complain about being feminist. Exactly. <laughs> like if he comes out, like I swear that's why he hired the vagina vagina logs to get them to see it. Get them to see it. It's like I'm gonna get they. Somebody came to him and was like, "We can't make this movie. We need a female audience." Lives. And he was like, "All right, I'm hiring this woman. Go sit in the corner and write me a thing." And he like, "Oh, thanks for your crumbs it off and throws it away." Yeah, exactly. And it's like, was, just so it, he so may have been like was, above us all. I was a little bit disappointed in the movie, um, like a lot, probably because I saw it late and a lot of people had gone and seen it, gone and seen it twice. And a lot of people were great. raving about it. A lot of people it. were raving about it. I mean, I still was managing my expectations. So I can't right. say I was disappointed. For me, it was about as good as I hoped it would be. Right. Yeah. That's what I should say. I wasn't but not disappointed. as good as it could have been. Not as good as it could have been. Um, it was It was definitely worth seeing. It's And I think, I do think, I will well say made. that Claire, and Claire, Aaron Clary was the one for people who don't know who originally wrote the article, they got worried, spread around worried that it would be like feminist preaching. And even yeah. in the article he said, he hadn't seen it. He was just worried. The signs were pointing that it might be preachy, so he wasn't going to go see right. it. Anyways, Turns I think out it's his, not really no, I think his fears were mis were just not didn't pan out. Right, he was just but the elements that he issue. was basing his fears off of were all there. They were there, yeah. yeah. But it just never. Like, luckily, it didn't get that preachy or stupid. Right. It did get kind of dumb because here's the things that bugged me about it. And just I could unrealisticness. See why. That's unrealisticness, like yeah, okay, Charlie Theron thing, like you know, is in a fight with him. Like she's toe-toe. first of all, she only has one arm. Two, she only has one and arm. she's in toe toe well, with this dude who's like right, yeah. played Bane. And, well, right, and, and of course, though he at the time is partially tied up. Like, got a chain right. around him and, and everything. And he's all dehydrated so it's a more realistic in that sense. Right, it wasn't ridiculous. It was just right. like, that fight probably would not go that way. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. 
And luckily, they didn't have a whole lot of lines where she's like girl power or anything. No, like that. there was. They it were was both really, characters. That's what that I'm saying. That's like, what's so funny is that if yeah. it hadn't been for that initial article, feminists wouldn't. Not only they may not give two shits about it. If anything, they would be upset about right. it. They certainly wouldn't be championing. Right. The it. only dumb like girl stuff that was going on in it that was unreal, really unrealistic, was the whole like tribe of grandmothers at the end that all of a sudden. Right. They, although most of them get killed off. Yeah, quick, it wasn't but. so unrealistic <laughs> as it was just like bizarre because right, they yeah. they didn't do anything particularly badass. Like they were tough old broads who weren't afraid to fight but they all died I mean right no but what was weird is that it was just weird that like all the bad guys in this land where all the men are right. running things and then the the, the place they gotta get to is where all the women are in charge right yeah. okay. Okay. that's yeah, the only one yeah. you can get like okay. but it was a wasteland too and nothing, right, yeah, there was like four people and they were all right, dying yeah. so it wasn't now, really now the real problem with the movie to me all that was just to get that out of the way because that's been the tempest and the teapot around the right movie. it turns out this wasn't turns out it's not that big a deal aspect of the movie. luckily we could ignore yeah. it after a few comments right so comments said we could ignore that <laughs> the movie was pr- had some pretty crazy like cars and like yeah, it was fun it was, it was a fun, fun movie sure. I think it would have been amazingly fun to film yeah. you're just driving these monster trucks around like, in the desert spikes yeah, all over exactly. you're like on top of a big pole right, in the like, desert like, like, that was pretty cool that was pretty cool yeah like a lot of cool stuff that like they can and a very different version of the Mad Max world where it's a bit more like I was saying I like that they had like tribes the gasoline tribe right and, uh, yeah exactly bullet yeah. orders or whatever right yeah exactly and like we were saying like how ridiculous it is they had like a specially sculpted yeah. skull mask in our early comments and the other ones were just but he had more obvious. of like a real city set up too right. with manufacturing right and stuff. yeah this one is much more of a sci-fi type movie than just like fantasy a, yeah. a sci-fi fantasy set in a world that is mostly ruined but the little enclaves of society have their own Starting manufacturing back, abilities yeah. and things like that you know and it's it's just it's more dune than like you know post apocalyptic but it's still unlikely that he would have like custom acrylic right, armor but what <laughs> like this one does not apologize for it. Everything this movie is a lot a good thing. crazier when, and when, weirder. Because someone, com- someone was commenting that they wish they'd seen more backstory on the bad guys. I'm like, when you have characters like this that are no, so yeah. weird, that would just make it... The hi- that only highlights how unrealistic it is. Right, yeah. When you can just say, here's guy's arm, this is crazy guy, and you just go with it. And right, yeah, like, you don't explain why stormtroopers have white armor right. in Star Wars. You just give or them you don't explain armor. why the Lord Among Us wears a hockey mask and almost nothing else. You just, right, yeah, exactly. crazy, you just do it. Because that's part of it. And ex- sort of like with sci-fi, if you try to explain too much of the techno- like certain aspects you of it, it falls apart. Whereas yeah. if you just accept that there's time travel and move on, then right, the story is more story. fun. Yeah. Right. So it just totally straight off the bat goes in this ridiculous society that all like they all know they're dying in the desert, so they're all war right. hungry and crazy. And so the only time it's a problem is when they don't follow the rules of their own universe that they've right. set up. Yeah. But anyway, so like the it, the it's pretty fun. Uh, it's pretty entertaining. The really thing that the only thing that really bugged me about it is it probably won't bug anybody who hasn't seen the other ones. Okay. It's not a continuity issue because the other ones didn't really have continuity. Each one was kind and of also this is done without and this any, is done without any, any consideration to the other to ones. Them, like, yeah. The, all the Mad Max movies kind of exist independent of the others. Right. They just they just re-explore the theme each time, the yeah. character and the theme. I just liked Mel Gibson better than Tom Hardy. Yeah, Mel Gibson has a better yeah. I didn't like they made his character very flat. Yeah, I don't even. Someone said they didn't add enough depth, and it's not even so much depth. Because there was no backstory like with anyone in this. Right. To me, he didn't have enough personality. Exactly. He was just a very blank slate he was, guy. Like, all he came across as, and I know that was, it's set up even in the first monologue of the movie. Like, he's a man with only one, I'm a man with only one instinct. Two and I mean, I think, I almost and think so, they sort of did that on purpose and to be like, in this environment, everyone is just resorted to their base animalness. Right. But it's like, whatever, it's still, so who cares then? You have trouble like relating with or rooting for this guy who's just like a, a like some dude. Down, yeah, yeah automaton, just some dude. Yeah. And, um, and they were right that it, it was a little weird in that Mad Max was pretty much the second character. In the but that, and again, that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. It's just kind of weird that you would choose weird, to make yeah, it. Because you're following this character who is not actually... But honestly, knowing that it people. was the same guy who did the original ones makes me much more likely to give a pass. Like, if you want to do that with no, your character... No, yeah, like I said, it doesn't matter. Because yeah. it's just the way they just go with it. Right. I just liked it a little less. Because, for example... Because that's the interesting part of it. The, you have this unique character. Yeah. For example, in the other ones it was all kind of they were basically all westerns is what they were yeah the tropes were the the trope of the western the dangerous stranger comes into town takes care of business takes care of business because they won't fucking leave him alone yeah because he's just like the sigma archetype or right whatever. yeah some guy who doesn't play by the rules right. i'm just here to get my gas and get out right. and they're like do what i need man, to do I, initially doesn't want to help them just for helping them sake and then right yeah and then in this one it was more like he gets captured and it's a little bit of that because he's forced to help the women stuck in the truck because he needs the truck to get are out of it. Yeah. Their fates are intertwined a little bit. And um, 
But he's just less... I need to plug this Like, you know, in. Mel Gibson's just a little more charismatic. And to me, it's not its not so much that his character is any more animated. It's just somehow he gets more char- or more personality into exactly a stoic what character. what I was going to say. Like, yeah. there's a lot of characters in film that are stoic like, or stoic almost isn't just about not saying. Like a Clint Eastwood type. Right, there's more still characters. know something about them well, there's just more personality more there. Personality. Like, yeah. Mel Gibson had a kind of Devil May Care... Um, Ness to him, right. you know, like a bit of a, you know, roguish. Like burned out kind Mad of Max, Max, like, like I don't care. You know. Whereas the Tom Hardy one's just like I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah, Tom Hardy was hours. like he came across as like scared and, and um, right. you know, desperate, right. not personality, but not in any in any way that made you, you know, just or any has anyone to right. be desperate right. in that yeah. situation. And that was probably so. It's not more, unrealistic. And this it's is just, nothing about Tom Hardy as a choice. It probably right. was what the director was asking him to right. do. Yeah, which right. is right. a different direction that I didn't like as much. Right. Where it's like you know, it wasn't a focused like determined desperation it was just like desperation right yeah exactly yeah. and um there's plenty of silent kind of you know badass type protagonists like that that Mad Max is supposed to be in movies like for example but that come across more likable or more interesting right. like um Snake Plissken or Snake something Snake Plissken yeah that's a like, badass example um, you know also Kurt Russell in Soldier right like, similar thing like, or he, like some of the Clint Eastwood ones like I mentioned right. by design because he's supposed to be a totally brainwashed person right he's person. supposed to have been like traumatized traumatized basically. and brainwashed but he's right. got some sort of like personality that makes you care about him in the show you know like in right. the movie in the, in the... or like you said in the original Mad Max he did it fairly well right yeah and uh, in the, like the Road Warrior and stuff yeah yeah so there are examples of that yeah, but, so that that was yeah. interesting. But so it's no, not terrible. The one thing for me that was the weirdest part of the movie, just like in terms of what they within their own universe, yeah. is she had mentioned the um, Furiosa character had mentioned trying to escape multiple times. Yeah, but in the beginning, she's like leading the convoy, and they're like, "Boss, what are we doing? Like, why yeah, would yeah. she be in this position to like? Yeah, that was a weird charge line that they didn't explain of like how she was always trying to get away, but was like in charge of their. Some yeah, sort maybe of they meant like she had always tried to get them out, but could never find. Right, a way so they didn't explain. It. It didn't like maybe explain she had never had like failed attempts, but was always like looking for, for ways way. to do yeah. it. Yeah, or had tried, was... or while leading war parties, had tried to find the green place before right. and, and never, never succeeded. Yeah, yeah. So, but overall, it was entertaining. I didn't yeah, really there were like some it. pretty great scenes, and they're like yeah. the guy in like the crazy half track car, yeah, like going out tank. and shooting blind. Yeah, the, yeah, I love the stupid. The, so that's why I like that the original guy did it because there's stupid stuff that doesn't make any sense. Just like yeah, there's, it's totally, in a world where there's like, no. God, but I did also. I one thing yeah, I did like, which made craziness. a lot more sense, is that in the original Road Warrior, they were collecting gas. They it didn't say where they were getting it. And they were like collecting it, like literally the car crashed, and he was collecting drops of it in a pan, yeah. and still driving like this souped-up car that was getting like seven miles, miles of a gallon. Yeah. And this one, there was like gas town, yeah. so they had like a source for their gas, right, which yeah. made more sense as to why they could drive vehicles. Right, and it was more and like bullets. They then, had bullets, but like most people wouldn't just have a lot. Right, of ammo. like the warlords controlled the parts right. of the world. So that there still was, had but there still was sources. And, for right, it. yeah, that still had factories right. or mines were controlled by the warlords. And then, like, the wasteland was ruled by tribes that would try to raid Which them awesome. as they but get Yeah, that guy sitting there, like, after he got blinded, even, was just, right, like, yeah. shooting at them. Right, yeah, exactly. And but that was the crazy, fun thing about it, too, because right. that's, that's and it was kind fun. of realistic. It was a fun movie, right? Even though it's absurd, like, technology and the hack mess. The tribal, like, like, like war tribal countries warlord, after shit you know, like that. Gross dude, but because right. he's the guy everybody's scared of, he's like, I'm going to shoot them all. Like, right. you know, and the, the people are like, you know, we'll die for you, my The only other thing real unrealistic to me was the speed at which the the one the main zombie war kid yeah. abandoned his like religious fervor for this dude like, right yeah one incident where he let this guy down and all of a sudden this person who was willing to like die, die for it with no per- um, yeah but they uh, had to compress time for yeah. story purposes but yeah so that was a but that was a good line too he's like trips he's like doing drops a gun mediocre yeah, right. <laughs> and he yeah, drives yeah. off he's, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's not even like failing he's just like, oh, mediocre yeah, right, right, <laughs> just yeah. like we were talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh mediocre Right. And I do like that in the when I was a kid, I'd always used to want to see like unmaskings, like Cobra Command, and like want to see, but it, it never like it it's never lives up to it. Right. So it's it's better when just like so explaining backstory is, is worse. Yeah, it's yeah. better to never show his face. That's the thing. Like his whole point is to make all three prequels to Star Wars, so nobody cares who Darth Vader was as a whiny teenager. Right, exactly. Darth Vader is what's cool, right? Not Darth Vader's formative or this years. Or guy when he right, took yeah. the mask off. Like, what? Come on. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so I thought I liked. It. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I thought it was fun. But I just there was a few little things in there that I, you know, unfortunately you can't unsee when you know how to see these things in films. Yeah. Can't go back in the matrix. Can't go back in the matrix exactly. 
But they really weren't that bad. And it really, like I said, the thing that bugged me about it the most is really just that Tom Hardy's portrayal. Yeah, I just did not, not like their version portrayal. of this, this movie's this version. Ver- this, this movie's, movie's version. Because I think Tom Hardy's been great in other things. Yeah. But this... Um, and this is how they wrote the scenes. How they wrote the character out. of the scenes. Like, it was just... Um, he's less charismatic and less of a... You know, because like, like in the other movies, like I said, it's very much like the Western. He shows up and everybody kind of wants... Their, like, the good guys are like that need help are like, hey, aren't you going to help us? They're all looking to him. The bad guys are all like, you need to side with us and, and step and, out of the way. And they could have also done the one where like, he's just a dude out for himself. Like, sort of like in The Postman where he eventually right. comes around and ends up helping people. They never really had that sort of transformation either. So right. they never really had a reason it for becomes, him to like... abrupt in, for him as well as for that kid. Where yeah. Where he just decide, you know... Well, and he, well, it wasn't even abrupt because it never really happened. Like, he just decided to go back, I guess, because he thought that was his best chance of survival. Right. But yeah. it never really had that, like... It still was just a guy scrounging, basically, right. the whole yeah, movie exactly. for survival without having a motivation. Right, because the cool thing about... Which like, is realistic, but... Look at this movie. The whole movie's not realistic. Right, you need yeah. more than that. If you're going to be a spectacle... More charismatic main right. character. Someone that you can really root for. Right. That's the like, problem is you didn't find yourself really rooting for him. Right. Like in the other ones, the whole idea is not just Mad Max, but a lot of movies of that structure. The idea is you get the loner who could be a leader, but for some reason is burnt out and doesn't want to be. Or he's just not interested. Not interested. But he has all the but other qualities. But he has qualities. that ability yeah. and charismatic capability that people try to follow him anyway or to yeah. get him to join them and help us. You know, like yeah. help us. And then... That he has to be convinced, but he will do it eventually. But I have heard guy. that they're planning on making more of these. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I like yeah, the world that they've created. Yeah, so exactly. we'll see if hopefully the character can become a little more... Uh, yeah. A little It'll more It'll actually uh, be more fun to see the next one where, like, these he gets his villain. own car yeah, again. We, you know, well, I really thought he would get it back. Because he even yeah. saw it, and he was like, oh, my car. Yeah, I wanted a cool scene where he jumps off the one onto the other, and fights the guy out of it. back in his car. And then, like, he starts roaming the whole battlefield in his car, like, taking people that, but, like, I was pretty sure that, like, when he was running through... When he initially sort of escaped and was running through the tunnels, yeah, he almost stopped when he well, saw, he saw his car. And I was thinking, like, maybe because in the in Road War, he had like all sorts of hidden explosions, hidden weapons. Like, he right, could, like yeah. jump under there, find a hidden gun. That was like, a cool what, scene that too. Though, when too. he took all her weapons, like he took yeah, and he found them and all. And he has one gun, and right. then she goes to like turn on like the under the hood kill switch off, and he just like stops her, takes a gun out that was in there, and finds and like, then seven Robin, more. And like like thirty seconds of him. Cleaning out the whole thing of seven weapons hidden everywhere. Like, Finding just all the hidden yeah, you know? Figured out where all figured, the hidden weapons right, would be. Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. So it was good. I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, like little It wasn't nitpick, preachy. But yeah, it wasn't, um, it wasn't bad. It was entertaining. I also saw Daredevil, which I think you mentioned on the show at yeah. one point. But the Kingpin. You finished it? Yeah, what do you think about that? It. I saw like uh, four episodes in now. So basically okay. the one that showed the Kingpin Yeah. Finally. Because I was right, kind of wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it's, it's an unfortunate very, version of the game. Yeah, that's that what I, I like think. It's not, and it because just the more you go on, the more it becomes like just. It doesn't get worse comes, per se, but it shows how weak. Not that's strong. what I mean. It's incongruent for someone in that position who's he's like a scared little kid who those people do not end up in that position. Like right. the Wesley character is a much stronger person, right? Yeah. And like he's much right more apt man. for it's, that yeah. type of like. Because they're always like, we don't say something. These people, and then he's like apologizing to everyone and stuff, like, oh, I'm sorry, and all this. And like, well, these like outbursts of anger. Right. But like, yeah. supposed to show how dangerous he can be, but it's not the right kind of. of, of I guess they power want to try to go a different that. direction or something, but yeah, like, of yeah, no, like the, the kingpin in my mind is the kind of character, like in this show, oh, because spoiler alert, people. Well, he's like absolute mobster like control. Right, yeah, he's absolute mobster control, but he's the, he's the classic. Underworld alpha, you know, right. type. Two. And they could make him tortured. That's fine, right? But they, he's this one. He's way too like childlike in his motivations for any of that stuff to make sense. Right? Yeah. He's not like only, this is like, a guy a leader, who has gotten is... to be basically a billionaire, and yet no one knows who he is. He's not going to have right. such like no one can ever prove that he's motive. not anything but right. a legitimate. So he's, he's basically man. a mastermind, and they're not right. showing a character who is a mastermind. Right. Exactly. They're showing a guy who's rage filled and worried about being seen. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, it's a bit weird because like and in like the nervous show, around this girl show, and yeah, stuff he, like that. He meets this woman while buying art, you know, in like high art society places. Right. And I think in the cart, not the cartoon. I'm sorry, the comics. I think that is the woman that eventually becomes his wife. Like in this thing, his one weakness is that he has a wife. But in the in the comics, they never say how he married her. It's yeah, just it like matter. a classic kind right. of mobster storyline. Like probably like, married for twenty years. He's, or whatever. The, he's been in the crime family this whole time. Right. He's got a wife and. He tries to keep her out of all the ugliness of right. the crime world. And so, and I think she's even sick in the comics, you know. So, like, right, like the, m- the, the flashes of humanity are him worrying about his sick wife, you know. Which they added in that one episode, sort of. 
Yeah. Which I won't mention to and spoiler alert, but right, yeah. where she gets poisoned or whatever. Oh, oh you haven't seen that. that. Okay, yeah, you're not yeah. that far ahead, sorry. No, I'm only I'm only like uh, episode five or something. Okay. But anyway, it's basically after the initial reveal of the Kingpin. But yeah, so in this in this version, he goes to dinner with her after asking her out, but even asking her out, he's all kind of like, like fidgety and, and fidgety, then like, like kind of aspy or something. Yeah, like nerdy and bad. Like he's like, been too like reclusive some for kids too long. Prom. Which I know that's what they're going for, but again, it's just incongruent with what right, this person yeah. would have to he be. He could be reclusive for it. so long, but not so like. Uh, it's not I even that know. character's unrealistic. It's just like if you're going to say he's doing this, then that they're not the type of person that would be able to even do that. Or it would just take a very different flavor of crime family. Like this is the way he's coming across is like the kind of guy who builds bombs in the basement, has a master plan as a loner, not as, as a loner, a, right? Yeah, not as a mastermind. Not they, as a mastermind. You have to be a mastermind, right? And you'd have to be not only good at dealing with people, this but like Machiavellian and controlling like dozens of people for seeing their motivations. More of a politician, yeah. less of like a um, assassin or right. like yeah, a psychotic right. hiding in the. Uh, I'm trying to think of someone who basement. did not necessarily the way the character looks. I think physically he's perfect for the. And I think he really, could portray though. And I think he could too. Right I just, again, well. that's how they wrote it. I think it. Vince but D'Onofrio like, is a good choice. Yeah, someone like even in like Sons of Anarchy, like the black guy was more Pope. Of a, yeah, Pope. Pope. He was, was like a kingpin. To the kingpin that was like and, what yeah. the kingpin was. To where like everyone knows the cops are, and you're like, dude, we cannot fuck this guy over. He's got nobody he controls touch everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Pope would, was more of the kingpin than, right. and I guess they probably wanted to be more exotic than that. Is the problem right. they thought that had been done, to but death it doesn't now. work really. But what you could do to make what you could do to make the kingpin a little more unique, and what he's kind of always been is that. Um, you just have to do a few little touches here and there in terms of like, you know, just how reptilianly, you know, like cunning he is. Not well, just not like, like that, but how he would be someone who's like a complete mastermind and then in flashes of whenever it was necessary, resort to like brute force and violence. Right, yeah, because that was people thing would about think about he was like this just like cunning in, businessman and all of a sudden he would just smash someone's head or something. That was yeah. part of the character in the comics that was always fun. Because, Which was good, yeah. Like there would be one or two times where like Spider-Man breaks into his office and, and like, you can't take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you can't take anything to the cops. You have no proof. It's like, yeah, well I could beat your ass. I'm Spider-Man. Right. He's like, very well. And he <laughs> gets like, up, like takes it. off his coat. Right. And it turns out he's like, oh right, you're 500 pounds. Right. You know, and he just like grabs him and bear hugs Spider-Man and, like, and right. just like crushing like, him. Uh, you know, he's like, oh god, and Spider-Man's superhuman. Right. You know, and of course they can't. So he was supposed to be sort of superhuman somehow too. But... Well, he was just supposed to have been it, uh, abnormally, abnormally huge strong. too. And that was yeah. supposed to be part of his story was being picked on for being a big fat kid as a kid. Right. But he was very intelligent. Right. And, and so cunning. instead of just resorting to, you know, being like, oh, they're picking But people would assume me. that that wasn't there because he was a cunning, like, right. Machiavellian he, dude. He was supposed to have played up have, as like, a child. Brute force. Right, he would play up as a child. His aspect, depending on who he was with, like if he was with the mob, he'd play up that he's a big brute. Right. If he was with in school, he'd play up that he was a big dummy. Big, and yeah. then when they weren't looking, he would take his revenge on them. Or right. when they thought he was too stupid to realize what was going on around him, he'd have understood the plot and undermined yeah, his opposition. Exactly. You know, like, he, he played people to their own conception of him. Yeah, yeah, so that's so I just don't like what they did with it in there. It yeah. doesn't like ruin the show, but it's just no, it's no. distracting almost. Right, it was distracting me too. Yeah. It's very weird. And then like the part where he immediately gets up when the the Russian mob stir comes to see him, he's not supposed to see him in person. So he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Instead, yeah, yeah. And he's and like just kind of walks away. Covers his head yeah, like exactly. A guy being photoshopped or photographed right. by paparazzi. You know, right. Like that was that's what I'm saying. Through. It's just weird. Like the kingpin I know in the comics and everything. Would have like dabbed his mouth, right? And then like leave us like, to the leave woman, us, yeah. You know, and, then, and then it's when he killed the would have right, killed the guy. Would have like you have ruined a perfectly good dinner, right? Like, exactly. you know, not like you embarrassed me in front of this woman. Is right. what he said to the guy, like, and then killed him later on. It's like yeah. you embarrassed me in front of her, which was like totally petulant. Right, that's and, what I'm uh, saying. Like he wouldn't have even viewed himself as being embarrassed. Right, no, he just he would have been like you broke the protocol. He would have told him you embarrassed yourself. Yeah, exactly. Embarrassed. That's what I mean. You have ruined. I told you not to see me. In my civilian, and, then pop his head and or like you know, like, and then he would have been like, "Well, I'm sorry, sir. He's very urgent. He's like, disobedience is never tolerated, <laughs> yeah. and crushed him. You know, right. like, so, yeah. But anyway, different, different, and not as satisfying. But uh, yeah, the show's still good so far. Right. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Yeah. What else we got on the list? I got uh, just a little, another little topic here in general. It's not super fun or funny, but something came up recently with work on other things, different things, and, and dealing with insurance stuff, it's like, I recognize, one of the things that makes it difficult for people, they don't understand, everybody wants insurance, right? Like, oh, yeah. I want insurance. 
Well, they just don't know why. There's something they pair it. Well, it's because it's been pushed around for so long, everybody knows they need it to pay off because you can't do it without the middleman of insurance these days almost. It's too... Well, also, insurance has become, like, in in the same... For a lot of things, it becomes a service that they think they need and not an actual hedge. Just right. like with health care instead right. of health insurance, exactly. you get car insurance is like roadside and all the services that they think they need when really they're not they're not just treating it like an actual hedge. Right. Like for example, there's some insurance services out there that are actually closer to real insurance, but they're like they're not the normal ones. Like for example, like uh, I think it's like Affleck or whatever. Mm-hmm. The way it works is if an incident that qualifies occurs under the coverage plan that you have, you have coverage for accidents. Right. Any on the job, off the job accident. Right. occurs and you have to go to the hospital they in the contract will then automatically give you no questions asked a certain amount of money because you had to go to the hospital right. help and cover then, your hospital then they look into further to see if it qualifies for something and then, else right, yeah so that's just that is actual insurance, insurance right you pay so much it's more it's more like life insurance right versus exactly. like if this then Any this real insurance is right. like life insurance right. when this occurs if and when this occurs right you pay a certain amount of premiums there's certain conditions and what it does and does not support out, right. and then if and when then it pays out not this I have insurance meaning that some big rich company is going to argue for me about how much this gets paid right. for and whether or not we know it's interesting doctor. Well, what's crazy is that people just don't realize all the people who say like, "Oh, we need free insurance." I got my Obamacare. It's like yeah. you're not the client. Right. The insurance company you may pay for the insurance, but the corporation you work for is the client. They're yeah. the one they negotiate. With. Right. The the hospital's the client. All you are is the grist for their mill. They yeah, need inflow terrible. in terms of payments. So they set up the system that forces people or requires people to have to do business with them, and they know you, you're you not really getting any actual insurance out of it. Because like you said, it's not really insurance anymore. It's services. It's healthcare, yeah. And it's not even good services because it's not like paying some sort of rate plan that it's like yeah. – yeah, it's, it's not, not like, like a, a meal plan for where you get a better medicine. deal by paying, paying up front, paying or, up front or, subscribing. or subscribing to it yeah. or paying for the whole year well, even though the you whole might not use it all. Is a mess. It's not even yeah. analogous to anything anymore because it's, no, it's, 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 it's a, a protective, weird, weird market that does not follow any uh, free market principles anymore. Right. And uh, But anyway, it's like, yeah, it's like that principle is that people need to realize there. It's like this is just a little short little bit, but just like. People don't realize that all these things, you are, even though you may be the one buying the product, it's the same problem with schools. Yeah. You pay for it, but you're actually not the client anymore. You don't have a say in how it goes. or how, You can't say, hey, I want my money back. You're not yeah. giving me a good service. You, they don't care. You have to sign up for a year. They deduct from your payroll, and then they, they only pay out if they can determine that it's covered because the law makes them do that. And then they don't pay out to you. Like, let's right. say you go to the doctor and say, hey, my doctor bill was 20 grand. I have insurance. They go to the doctor and negotiate to pay ten grand with them. Right. Oh, it's you know, terrible. Like, yeah. But at least some some of the private non the ones that you don't have to have a job to get. Right. Still do it the traditional way. Like I think like Affleck's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But it's well, because I mean that's the only way it really works. But that's the only one that's I mean? honest yeah. insurance to me. It's it's like one where you you pay twenty bucks a month, sixty bucks a month, whatever you want to pay for however much coverage you want. Right. And then on a qualifying event occurring. They hand you money so you can go take care of business. Right. You know what's interesting is with life insurance, at least with the one I have, the um, and I didn't know this was the case, but it, suicide doesn't even – suicide will still pay out if it's not within the first two years of the yeah. policy. Some, it depends on the policies. But, yeah. like but you know what doesn't pay out is if you're killed in the commission of a felony and which or, is in, more prison. Like, or right, in prison. Yeah. Which is more likely for us. <laughs> well, everything's a felony I don't plan now. on killing myself, but everything's a felony now. I think I've, they've the done some study where they said the average American – commits like 13 felonies a day if they wanted to be certain like yeah. religiously per, um, pedantic observant or uh, officious yeah. I guess about it yeah if you want to be completely observant of every law you every could little not. stupid thing yeah you, you couldn't can't. do anything certainly not without there's no way to actually know about all these as the average person yeah exactly alright were there any other top trending stories worth uh, mentioning no, on the list else. nothing fun nothing I mean let me look real quick but yeah nothing gotcha nothing that was it all right. So, yeah, that's that's about it for the trending. All right, so I think that's going to do it for this week. Yep. Thanks for listening to the English and English podcast at EnglishEnglish.net. Dot .net, not dot .com. Dot .net. net. Or on YouTube. Yep. And we'll and, talk. And uh, we've got a Twitter up now. Oh, you did? You made one? Site. Yep, we got one. What it's, is uh, it? Not much on it yet. It's uh, uh, two English bros. Number two English, English bros. bros. So numeral two English bros. Exactly. All right. At numeral two English and English, English was taken. English English is taken. All the good ones are taken. Yeah, exactly. We came a little late to this party. What about English symbol and in English? It does not support. It doesn't support English singles. Hands.
Okay. Two English Bros is good. Two English Bros. English Bros it alone is already, already taken too. Yeah. Like some guy doing some absolute crap. Now you can make it like the actual address and then the name, right? Could be English yeah. and English at English at two English Bros kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. The actual name is English and English. But it's the, the hand the Twitter the hashtag handle hashtag is the Twitter at, handle. at two English at Bros. Two English Bros. Yeah. Okay, cool. At two English Bros. We're gonna be looking into giving away free stuff. Yeah. So So stay tuned. And uh, for right now there's not much going on on Twitter other than announcements of when we post. Right. Um, the next podcast and but stuff I'll get like on that. there and try to, to throw on some articles and stuff when I find funny stuff yeah exactly so we'll talk to you guys later adios